So when it comes to what foods you can choose and to add to your diet, I'm not one for superfoods. I think we need to eat a variety, lots of color, um, and you know, um, make sure that we're, um, we're e eating lots of different types of plant foods because that's what's associated with better gut health and therefore better overall health. But when it comes to the science, and um, there's a lot of data supporting these foods that I've shown on the slide. So soya consumption, and we'll come back to that. So you guys in the US call it it's soy, we call it soya. So minimally processed forms of um, soy, such as tofu, edamame, tempeh, um, soya milk. Also mushrooms, really good health um, gains uh, out for grabs there for all, all um, our chronic illnesses, including cancer. The red colored fruits and vegetables have lycopene, which is associated with reduced cancer. Um, cruciferous vegetables, so the ones where the leaves are shaped as a cross, so broccoli and cabbage and kale and so forth, um, really full of anti-cancer properties. Allium family, like onion and leeks and garlic, really good and brightly colored. Colored um, berries um, are also associated with a reduced risk of cancer. So coming back to soya, there's always a lot of misinformation out there about soya, but have no doubt that um, for all our chronic conditions, the consumption of soya has been associated with better health outcomes, and that includes cancer. So we've had a large analysis just published, um, I think it was 2020, yeah, the references at the bottom, that looked at 114 different studies, brought all the results together and showed how the consumption of soya was associated with a lower risk of a number of our chronic cancers. Um, the only bit of caution was that miso soup um, increased the risk of um, gastric cancer, particularly if you were drinking lots of it, you know, four to five um, portions a, a day, mainly due to the salt content, because salt does increase the risk of um, gastric cancers. Um, coming back to more healthy choices you can make in your diet, nuts, lots of herbs and spices, and king or queen of herbs and spices is turmeric, Coffee, as I've said, is associated with lower risk of cancer, particularly colorectal cancer, liver cancer, esophageal cancer. Flax seeds are really good on a plant-based diet. Not only are they full of the healthy omega-3 fatty acids, they have a type of polyphenol called lignans, which are associated with lower risk of cancer. They reduce blood pressure. They're good for heart health. And again, I put tea. If you enjoy different types of tea, um, that's great. And green tea has a number of health benefits. Now, I'm, I'm often asked about organic food consumption. And we don't have that much data. Um, it, you know, common sense, sense tells us it would be great to consume a diet that limits um, the exposure to these agrochemicals and pesticides, herbicides, fertilizers, etc. But that's not always an option for people. So I'm quite clear that um, it's best to eat a range of plant foods and not worry too much about whether they're organic or not organic. If you can afford organic and have access to it, that, that's great. And that would be a precautionary step to take because we have two two studies that suggest that people who are consuming the most organic types of food reduce their risk uh, of cancer and particularly related to non-Hodgkin lymphoma type of cancer that I treat um, seems to be a similar theme there. Um, and the WHO, not all organizations, but certainly the WHO have classified some of these insecticides and, uh, and herbicides as group two a and B carcinogens, so um, diazinon, malathion, um, parathion, glyphosate. And it's mainly because they see um, certainly in, in vitro and animal models an increased risk of non-Hodgkin lymphoma. So there may be um, an element of truth there, but again, I would stick to eating large variety of fruits and vegetables rather than over worrying about whether they're organic or not. And in the US, and certainly we also have the same in the UK, um, our environment agencies produce a list of the most contaminated fruits and vegetables and the least contaminated. So if you are trying to make a healthy choice, then you know avoid uh, or, or, or use organic versions or eat organic versions of the dirty dozen list and you'll find that on the EWG European sorry the environmental working groups um, website 
So overall, when it comes to cancer prevention, I think, you know, it's clear that a healthy lifestyle and dietary approach will reduce cancer. We need to focus on the overall diet pattern, not get hung up on individual foods and superfoods and nutrients. They all work together in a way that we'll probably never understand in its entirety. We need to raise public awareness, better education for the public and also health professionals and address barriers that are preventing people making these healthy choices. Um, so we need to advocate for public health and policies that allow everyone to access healthy plant-based foods and green spaces, and we need clear messaging on alcohol consumption. And with this type of approach, there's co-benefits for planetary health, and no health talk can really um, be complete without me mentioning the climate and the ecological crisis we are facing. That is the biggest threat to human health currently. And a large analysis um, from the European Perspective um, uh, Initiative into Cancer showed um, that in a population of around 400,000 participants from 10 different countries, that those who are eating a predominantly plant-based diet, that is a diet that adhered to the guidelines from the Eat Lancet Commission that have created the planetary health plate, plate which is a virtually plant-based plate, um, it showed that if we all stuck to a mostly plant-based diet, we would not only reduce our risk of premature death and cancer, and when you look at cancer deaths, um, that could be down um, by about 40%, but we would also reduce greenhouse gas emissions and land use. So there's co-benefits of this way of living and eating for our planet and of course the animals. Mm -hmm.